Hey everybody, this is your host Daisha. Just a note that May is Chamber Music Month, and so we decided to have an actual chamber music group onto the show for this episode. You'll be hearing members of the Modigliani Quartet. Thanks to Chamber Music Houston, we got to have these guys into the station, and they were great. Also, uh, because producer Todd has outfitted the studio with a new flux capacitor, we were able to travel forward in time to bring the music from the following day's performance into the show. So effectively, when you hear these guys in this episode, they are talking about a performance which they had yet to play. Mind blown. Also, just a note that you can hear us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and TuneIn. Whenever you listen to us, however you listen to us, make sure to rate and review us so that classical music and classical classroom can rule the world. <laughs> also, you can follow us on Twitter and Tumblr. Now for our show. My name is Daisha Clay. I'm the audio librarian here at Classical 91.7. While I'm a real librarian, I have a deep, dark secret. I know very little about classical music. I grew up listening to rock. And I know something about jazz. But when it comes to classical... But I really want to learn. So... Every week on this show, a classical music expert will give me a piece of classical music they think I should know, and then we'll discuss it. Come learn with me in the classical classroom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the classical classroom. I'm Daisha Clay, and here with me today are two members of the Modigliani Quartet. The quartet has been together for about 12 years, and they formed in Paris. They have a uh, five CDs out right now available for your listening pleasure. They've played all over the world, major halls, Carnegie Hall. They've played festivals everywhere uh, to rave reviews. And they have paused here in Houston, thanks to Chamber Music Houston, to play a show at Rice University. Uh, Welcome to the program, Luik and Philippe. Thank you. (laughs) Um, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves individually and tell me what instruments you play. Louis, you go first. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think because I'm not the first, actually. <laughs> I am the second violin in the quartet. Ah, and okay. uh, that's uh, yeah, nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, the first one, the first violin is Philippe, which uh, ah. is just... So, okay. yeah, you got the two violins nice. today. Nice. Okay. Okay. I like violinists. This will work out. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> you don't have a choice, right? <laughs> the I'm other stuck didn't with show you. up. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so I know one of the pieces that you're going to be playing tonight is, um, and I'm going to botch the conductor's um, composer's name. Uh, it's Erno Donani's Quartet Number no. Three in A Minor. So I'm hoping that you can teach me about the composer and this piece. And can you start with how to say his name? Of course, that's Dornani. Okay. And uh, you were not Hungari- uh, Hungarian people, yeah, no, so it, 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 <laughs> maybe it's absolutely not like this. You say it, <laughs> and you were absolutely right because he was also a conductor, actually. So oh, nice. yeah, and his um, grandson is a very famous conductor, actually, Christoph von Donani, and uh, he's uh, conduct very famous orchestra all around the world. But Ernio, uh, Ernio, it's difficult for French people also to <laughs> pronounce <laughs> Hungarian <laughs> name. Uh, Dornani was a um, very famous uh, conductor, uh-huh. pianist, composer, and teacher too. He was uh, living in um, Hungary in Budapest, in, and he was um, very, very famous in the beginning of the, the 20th century uh, in Hungary. Okay. Yeah, and he was born in 1877. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so extremely contemporary to Bartok, actually, which is mm-hmm. mo- more famous than him. Yeah. Um, and uh, he actually spent most of his life then in US uh, because he lived in New York for a lo- very long time. And, and in and Florida. <laughs> and in Florida? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, for the <laughs> weather. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think he's, he's more known in, in US than he is in, in France even because he... Yeah, that's this kind of... People which, uh, despite they had a, a wonderful career and a very complete career, uh, didn't go through time and posterity. People don't really know and play him 
while he, he really created very beautiful pieces, very wonderful pieces even. And uh, that's that's actually why we put the, this kind of piece in our programs because mm, it's extremely rare to hear it. Uh-huh. Also, not so many recordings mm-hmm. from it. A few, especially American quartets recorded it. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's always for us very interesting because most of our audience actually discover the piece while we play it. So it's a very nice thing for us and the audience at the same time. Yeah, I, I had never heard the piece before I started preparing to talk to you guys. and You it, prepared it? I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not. Um, so why, like, so he's lesser known. He's, uh, and you're kind of, you explained that, that he's he's sort of somebody that you want to show the audience because he doesn't get, his work doesn't see the light of day very much. What else do you particularly like about his work? Like, what... What about it appeals to you? Well, I think it's there are very different influences in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, his home land, which was at that time uh, Autriche Hungary, Austro Hungary, Hungary. I don't know how you say it. Mm-hmm. It was still when the, there was the you know the empire of uh, Austria Hungarian yeah. um, Empire, and uh, so of course the, there are all those uh, Eastern European culture. Uh, influences which are very present in his music, but mm-hmm. also everything he he met in the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all the jazz influences, uh, the the Black American music, mm-hmm. and that's for us a very interesting part of the repertoire because it's not so present in the quartet repertoire. Quartet string quartet repertoire is very much from the, the very Germanic culture. Mm-hmm. That's where most of the big repertoire was created. You know, all those Haydn, Mozart, mm-hmm. Beethoven, Brahms, they were all from the same kind of uh, place. So it's uh, it's interesting. And, and also it's uh, a music which is very nice for the audience to discover because it's extremely easy on the ears. Do mm-hmm. you say that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know we say easy on the eyes. <laughs> but I, I say that, yeah. <laughs> so I <find> <laughs> Uh, Louis, what about you? What do you what do you like? I like about uh, it? a lot this uh, this music because um, we can um, feel transported in uh, another time, mm-hmm. actually between between the the two world war and um, in the spirit of the black and white movies and and um, for example the maybe the first quartet we recorded uh, this quartet was the Hollywood String Quartet with uh-huh. musicians who were from apart from the, uh, they were solist in the, the studio orchestra in LA, and we can feel this uh, this old uh, Belle Époque, we call that in France. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's also, so we have beautiful tunes, beautiful melody, and also a very um, big dynamic, uh, rhythmic dynamic, mm-hmm. all uh, along the, the, the piece. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should we should hear some of it. D- um, should we just start at the beginning? Is there a particular point that you'd like to start at? In the in the piece. In the piece, yeah. The second violin solo, please. <laughs> 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 there is none. <laughs> <laughs> there is one. <laughs> uh, but well, that that depends entirely on on your choices. The 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 three movements are very nice. Why don't we just start at the beginning? We'll listen to a few minutes, okay, and you can kind of kinda talk about what's going on. Of course. Okay. That's extremely typical of that time and and the Eastern European uh, repertoire. This very strong start of the viola. Viola was not was never uh, in the German repertoire the the most important voice of the quartet. Mm-hmm. I mean, about the themes I'm speaking, eh? it's a very important voice of the quartet. But uh, it was kind of never the one which was uh, introducing the theme, huh. and that's something which is going to happen a lot with those composers. Donani, Bartok, Smetana, Janacek, all the viola starts to have a very strong importance mm. uh, with the, the introduction of the themes. And that's what you heard, Toyo, Toyo. Yeah. That was the viola which brings it. So it's extremely typical of that time, mm. in that culture. Thank you. 
of reminds me of music from an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Yeah, it's exactly oh, that. Completely. You you really can put images on on this music. Uh huh. And that's that's also most of the work on this piece is related to this imagination. You have to find colors, imagine images, and also have a very strong uh, rhythmical sense. Uh, because you can imagine people playing it while looking at the movie, which goes, you know, which uh, I don't know exactly how you do because we never did it. Yeah. But I know there is a, you know, a line and the image, uh, uh, they feel, I don't know the word in English, uh, goes on, goes on, the movie goes on, and yeah. you have to play really exactly where you are supposed to. There is a, and you feel it in the in the rhythmical aspect, especially in the last movement, actually. Hmm. So it's kind of, how many movements are there in this piece? Three. There are three? Yeah. Okay. And what's going on, generally speaking, in the first movement? It's an alternance uh, with, uh, I think, a very big part, rhythmical part, mm -hmm. and um, very long melody. Mm -hmm. And um, this quartet is uh, dedicated to his wife, his beloved wife, so it's, <laughs> it's also a thing uh, with, um, he was happy and, and at this time when he wrote the, this mm -hmm. piece. Uh, I think uh, Donani was someone very optimistic, but um, we have to know that later in his life he will uh, lose his two sons during the World War II, oh, and wow. it won't be <laughs> always uh, yeah. the, 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 that spirit. And, and But in this piece, actually, he's, um, he's very happy. He's, uh, yeah. he's coming in the United States. Uh, he was the king, the emperor of music in <laughs> Hungary. Uh, he, for, for example, the composers, they were very um, proud of him. Also, mm -hmm. Bartok said, uh, if music should be resumed in one word, uh, it should be Dornani. Yeah, so it's very... Um, music in Budapest. Yeah, yeah. yeah music in <laughs> Budapest, yeah. <laughs> Beethoven yeah. would be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. I, <laughs> I think it's really funny that you say that he's happy, he was happy when he wrote this music because I was listening to it thinking, wow, this is really dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... Sometimes it doesn't sound dark, it sounds more angry than yeah. that. Yeah, but, yeah but uh, definitely kind of like negative. It's yeah, very minor I, key. And but, uh, you know, some people express their happiness in different, different, different ways. ways. <laughs> 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 well, let's move on to the second movement and talk about sure. what's going on there. This, uh, this movement is a, a bit like a, a choral, mm -hmm. you know? The, the, do you use that word too? Choral? Yeah. Yes. And uh, it's uh, it's indicated um, religioso, which means uh, <laughs> religiously. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and you really feel it because the, the, it's really, it's, it's a very nice piece to play. It's the, the kind of the base of the string quartet, those four voices which are really, you know, close to each other, mm -hmm. intimi intimate. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's a variation movement. Mm. So this theme that you hear is going to be reused in different ways. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's always the, the challenge of this kind of movement. So you have to express the same principal feeling in, in very different ways. And uh, mm. so there is going to be a, uh, the the first variation is going to be. <coughs> Uh, <laughs> you see, you don't give me water <laughs> and I stop coughing. <laughs> we don't. We don't give our guests water. <laughs> and of course, you want to, to, to get the best of them, and so you. It's put public them in radio. A That's what it is. We can't afford <laughs> the water. Really? It's like in France. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, do you know there is a huge strike in France right now uh, with public radio. People, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are on strike for three three weeks already. Oh my gosh. Anyway, that's a. Uh, so back to Donani. Um, so there are going to be yeah different vari variations. The first one is going to be uh, uh, it's the one you just hearing now, uh, where Donani plays with the the rhythm. He, he uses again the viola to, with a very different rhythmical line than the three other instruments, mm -hmm. which make kind of a, a feeling of uh, you know an how do you say uh, unbalanced uh, rhythmically speaking. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
the next one is going to be a fast one. Yatatita, uh, yatatati, which is going to sound a lot really happy, like uh, it's a viva chase. Loic was uh, was saying. Then uh, the next one is going to be... Uh, oh, yeah, there is... Uh, yeah, the yeah. next one is mine. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's different because, um, yeah, it's, see, it's, uh, the second violin is completely outside the, the group, actually. Mm -hmm. is getting uh, upset and very angry. And the three others are like uh, chords. And they like they the play, the, play. The, the first choral, but like... Uh, Uh, with a implacable very powerful uh, yeah. oh. and uh, and then the next one is going to be a very soft theme From of the viola, which might be the, the also the place in this movement where he expresses his love, uh, his love for his wife. Extremely tender, extremely nothing uh, harsh in there. And the, the end is the is, is the end of the loop. It's back to the beginning. Okay. And it's a closure. Uh, okay. This beautiful uh, religious uh, theme. Okay, so now we're going to enter the third movement. Yes, yeah, absolutely not the same spirit. <laughs> So that's where the spirit of the of the movies without uh, words, yeah, and where there were only music behind. That's extremely this type of music, yeah, very strong, very 
you know, fast and, and with a lot of carols, uh, surprises and things. Mm -hmm. Could be a cartoon almost. Is it fun to play? It sounds like it's it very fun. Really fun it's very fun. <laughs> it's um, the, the the first uh, contact with the work is uh, mm -hmm. is fun, but also tough because it, it's it's d technically mm -hmm. uh, quite difficult <laughs> it to, to put together. Yeah. But once you really know the piece, it's uh, it's a lot of fun to play. Yeah. yeah. And you see all those rhythmical yeah. and yeah. Right rhythmical <laughs> effects. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything has to be really precise rhythmically because mm -hmm. if not, you lose the the main effect of, the, yeah. of of this piece. It's very dissonant and kind of all over the place. Yeah, some people might think that it sounds a bit messy somehow, but uh -huh. I think it's also the, the the effect. You know, when you when you see those cartoons, uh, I mean, you, no, it's true. When you, you with mm. those characters which are you know running in the desert and stuff, <laughs> uh, with someone else uh, running after them, yeah, you know, all kind of things happen extremely fast. Mm -hmm. Somehow, also messy. You know, they are I don't know. Uh, uh, slapping each other and stuff, <laughs> and you see the smoke in the of the sand and stuff, but it's actually very well uh, organized as, mm. a, as a piece. But it's create it's made to create an effect, mm. uh, a bit messy. So he's dedicated this piece to his wife, and I just keep thinking, I, I'm being, I'm, I'm sure I'm being too literal, but, but what is this saying about his relationship? <laughs> yeah, I understand what you mean. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's more, it's more complex than that. It's, yeah. uh, it's not like a poem where uh, you, right. really, you know, if you write uh, ten lines uh, about your wife, of course you're not gonna <laughs> speak about the messiness <laughs> of your relationship. But I think in, in music, it's. Uh, I think the the most the, the principal theme, which is extremely tender, and extremely optimistic, is about that. But then you know, yeah. when you write a half an hour piece, a half an hour, half an hour long piece, uh, you have to find ideas and stuff. So you can't <laughs> say I love you for half an hour. You just have to right. really, you know. Uh, well, maybe that was indicative of their relationship. Maybe. Well, maybe, maybe she was, was a very active woman, you know, and. Uh, well, yeah, maybe it was like a know you know <coughs> tumultuous relationship. Maybe it was it was exciting. And, yeah. I think we we forgot uh, what it was actually to go from Hungary to United States, mm -hmm. and uh, we just arrived in Uda in US yesterday, yeah, and yesterday. Uh, we just <laughs> just have a ten hours flight, but it's nothing compared. To, th to this time, it was completely. You had you had to leave all your stuff in your old country to mm. go uh, by boat <laughs> to, to yeah. cross the ocean. That was completely. Uh, I don't know how many months to to yeah, or weeks, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it was completely different, and that was much more adventure. And, um, and, and it is um, now, and you arrive in a country, US, which was you know with all those industrial things, which were extremely active in comparison with. Uh, the old Europe at that time. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's also a mix with his impressions of the of the country, of mm. his life at that moment. It's not only about his relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well I mean and human relationships, you know, they take place in a in a place too. I'm sure this is you know Yeah, and you know, maybe he was just also very happy about the peace. Yeah. And he dedicated to the people he to the, the person he loves. Mm -hmm. it, it's not necessarily necessarily means about her. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a, a mirror of their relationship. Yeah. But, Voilà. That was <laughs> so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, a ve it's a very cool and very, very fast, very exciting. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. You know, it's, he he's actually we have a really large CD library here at the radio station, and uh, we literally didn't have any of Donani's work. You didn't have any? no. I couldn't find no. any in in oh. our library system. So there, there are a few works which are more famous than those quartets. The the, the Serenade, which uh -huh. is a, a chamber music trio, 
Mm -hmm. uh, there is also the variations for piano, uh, Avo Dirage Mama, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was created in New York also yeah. and which made him very famous at that time yeah. in New York. But uh, but yeah, it's not you know it's not the most uh, famous composer. Are you guys going is. to record this? Yeah, we we just uh, finished recording a, a CD with the the American Quartet of uh, Dvorak, uh -huh. the Bartok number two and Donani number three. Nice. So, but it's not uh, out yet. It's going to be the next one. It's, it's going to be released at the six CD. I think we made a bit more than that actually. You said oh, okay. five in at the beginning. I said five. That was what I found. But I think it's like uh, six or seven. Uh, oh, okay. Least, yeah. Okay. So why in in your show tonight you you're pairing this piece with Mozart and Shostakovich? Why pair well, those? <laughs> <laughs> what we like is um, to try to have a very big difference uh -huh. between the aesthetic of the composer we present for mm. a, a string quartet concert because um, for during all the concerts you will have the same four guys, <laughs> <and> the <laughs> same sound <laughs> during. <laughs> All the night, so it's important, I think, to 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 have very th three different uh, mm -hmm. composer. And of course, the Mozart quartet are, uh, sounds very different than the Donani. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell me maybe uh, Shostakovich is close, mm -hmm. it's closer than Donani, which is um, a bit right, but because they, they have been composed almost in the same years. Mm -hmm. But uh, Shostakovich was a Russian composer. Mm -hmm. And uh, even Donani, if he, he was uh, from um, Middle Europe, he moved to America. And, <laughs> and the, the, the spirits are completely different and the color of the sound uh, are also different. Mm, so it gives texture to mm, the, the, texture to the and, show. Yeah. I see. That's well, interesting. It allows people to discover, you know, also when they come to listen to an all evening of, of string quartet, it's basically not the most funny Repertoire. Huh? Yeah. The the people which go to listen to to chamber music and especially string quartet are people which like music and like mm -hmm. the diversity of it, mm -hmm. and also know it quite well. Yeah. So I think it's quite interesting to also sometimes offer them something they might not know. Something unexpected. Because for example, the Mozart Quartet. It's um, of course it's part of the the big famous, and uh, you can't get around it as a good string quartet. You have to play. Mm -hmm. uh, so the audience knows them also quite well. Yeah. But when you bring a Donani, it's also something new for them. And the Shostakovich is uh, very interesting because it's uh, it's very not typical of the of what people expect from him because he, he wrote 15 quartets. Mm -hmm. And the first one, the one we play, is actually the only one which is not like the, the other 14. Yeah. It's the only one which is very bright and, and, and very optimistic. And from then on, it's going to be a, a slow uh, going down to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Well, uh, so tell me a little bit about the quartet. I know you guys were friends in Paris. We were. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's, that's the story that you're selling <laughs> online. That's, uh, so um, I'm interested in the name. So Modigliani, the uh, artist, was the guy who during the early 21st century, or yeah, 20th century, sorry, uh, painted this sort of elongated figures and a lot of them had the sort of creepy blue eyes so why that why that choose that for a name yeah not not exactly because of the creepy eyes and the long <laughs> necks but mo more about um, the fact that he has a very strong style of his own yeah he was he was painting at a period at a time where uh, styles were going changing uh, extremely fast because people were expecting you know uh, they were asking painters, even the most famous one, to, to do some different stuff. And so, for example, if you see Picasso, which was maybe the, the, the most gifted painter of his time, you, you see how often he changed of style mm -hmm. from one to the other. And Modigliani was living this uh, very exact, exciting phase with a very different uh, approach of his art. He was uh, actually really going through with his opinion mm -hmm. of what was his style mm -hmm. and his vision of, of painting. So it gave him a very strong personality. And if you see one Modigliani, if you see another one in, you know, five years later, you, yeah. you recognize it. Mm -hmm. Well, if you see a Picasso from the Cubist uh, mm -hmm. time, then somebody is going to show you a brag of the Cubist time and you're going to be okay. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know anymore. Yeah. And, even, and even people which are extremely not famous, uh, 
there is something, uh, you know. Why, and we thought as a string quartet, the, 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 the main challenge is going to be to to create create our own sound mm -hmm. and uh, to, to to build a, a sound signature. And, and we thought, yeah, Modigliani did that extremely well with his own uh, art, and, and it's mm -hmm. going to be a good, you know, good name for our quartet because I of that. Are you guys spending any time in Houston while you're here before you move on to the next city? You mean, are we going to go to the Houston Museum of Fine Arts? <laughs> and see the Modigliani? <laughs> yeah, there's the, in the sculpture garden, there's one of my favorite sculptures. Yeah, so he, he started as a sculpture, actually, but he, yeah. he had some lungs problems, so he was oh. getting sick because of the, the fine uh, powder uh, which oh. uh, comes out, so he had to stop. And no, but in Houston, we wanted to stay because tomorrow they will play uh, the Houston Rockets uh, versus uh, Spurs, <laughs> Spurs from <laughs> Antonio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Tony Parker is a very famous French player. In his, uh, in really? The Sultan, the Sultan. Sadly, we're going to miss it because yeah, we're yeah. living for, uh, to for a, a, a city. Uh, <laughs> nobody knows, which is called Tulsa. Ah, Tulsa. Yes, I've heard of this place. Yeah, everybody yeah. have heard of it, but nobody have actually been there. That's true. So we've <laughs> never been there, so we are uh, we are happy to discover the place. <laughs> but uh, but sadly, we, we, we're going to miss the, the game. Oh, that's too bad. Watch it on TV, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not the same. You know it. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I was going to ask you guys what you thought of Houston and what you've done and all of this kind of stuff, but you just got here. Yeah, we just so got here and we didn't say long, but no, no, it's no, a... Really. You know, it's a nice place. Uh, we, <laughs> we went out yesterday. We discovered that there were so many different beers around so here. So much beer. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's very uh, it's it's very nice for us because we like beers. <laughs> we like to discover them uh, all around the world. So that was a part of our evening. The, we ate a very good burger. It seems to be also a good burger place. Um, That's what they say. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but but regarding the city, you know, it's so wide and spread that it's it's it's. Uh, we were looking for a kind of a historical center to walk mm -hmm. in, but actually, I don't think that there is. Uh, there are any. several centers. Yeah, it's like you know, the, the, there's like the the museum district, and then there's the downtown, which is actually built up a lot and kind of really nice now. But but yeah, it's a very decentralized city. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but uh, it seems uh, it seems a nice place to live. But uh, it's a place we're gonna live in uh, a short time. Sadly. Well, good luck with your show tonight. Yes. Thank you. And if you get to stay here in Houston for any longer, I hope you have a good time. Thanks. Um, so. It was great of you guys to come in. Very nice to meet you. Louis, Philippe. Yes. Yeah. You well should same. say your your last names. I don't think we ever even said your last names <laughs> because I'm, I'm scared Rio. too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm okay. Philippe Bernard. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Hey, bah, voilà. All right, everybody. That does it for this episode of Classical Classroom. For more classroom, go to houstonpublicmedia.org/classroom. You can also find us on SoundCloud. Listen there, or on iTunes, or on your Stitcher or TuneIn mobile apps. Or you can listen to all of them at once for a totally Dadaist listening experience. Follow us on Twitter and Tumblr. We're hilarious. Email me at dclay at houstonpublicmedia.org. Thanks today to audio producer Todd T. Dog Holslander for twiddling knobs. Thanks to program director Sinjim Flynn for his close talking. Thanks to editor Mark DeClaudio for his piercing, unblinking, stare stare booger bear eyes. Thanks to the Modiglianis. Philippe and Luik, whose last names I will not attempt to say because I will butcher them, for stopping by today. Thanks to me for saying words, but most of all, thanks to you for listening. We'll catch you next time. Thank you.